Hello fellow human, welcome back to another Dank Doggo r slash pro revenge. So our revenge for today is from you slash PJ Expat with the title of Want to undercut me on a job? By doing shady and poor work? Fine, just wait and see. I was an observer in this whole affair, but to say I didn't enjoy the hell out of it would be a lie. Company did fencing, walls, barriers, etc. Company A was run by Bob. Bob was a real upstanding guy, took over the business from his father and really grew it into something big. Bob had an employee, Jake. Jake had been with company A for quite a few years, but Bob and Jake always rubbed off on each other's in the wrong ways. Bob always felt like Jake was the king of shortcuts and shoddy workmanship. When Bob took over the company from his dad, Bob applied more pressure on Jake to bring up the quality of his work or to be let go. Eventually, Jake got tired of the increased pressure and quit and formed in his own fencing company called Company B. Here's where I come in. I started a job in a company providing business services to small medium sized business in the area and both company A and B became my clients. This was several years after company B had formed. From my outside viewpoint, company A was that local company that's been around forever, that does good quality work that you can trust, but they aren't going cheap, and they never try to be cheap, but you can trust them. Company B was that young startup who was cutting corners and being competitive in every way possible often by lying or misleading its customer. That's when Company C comes in. Company C was building a production facility in the area and wanted a wall with gates around its new production facility. This was going to be a big contract. And really the two players in the area that could possibly do the job was Company A or Company B. This contract was worth a lot. If my memory serves me correctly, the job was somewhere near seven figures. Company A and Company B went to go bid. Company B came in like a 30% lower price point and even though Bob tried to explain it wasn't possible for Company B to do the work that was promised at that price point that was given. Of course, money talks and Company B got the contract. I remember Bob was furious. In his eyes, he felt what Jake was doing was wrong. He didn't mind fair competition, but Jake's MO has always been way underbid, overpromised, rely on cost overruns to make a profit. Bob's opinions on business was a price is a price, and if he says he's going for X for Y, he's going to do X for Y even if he loses money. It's how he was raised. Some times go by and Bob gets a call from company C. They have apparently fired Jake and his company due to not being able to do the work required and ask Bob if he can come to fix the mistakes. Bob agrees and gets the job done. At this point, start thinking, he's gotta take Jake out. Jake is taking too much money out of his pocket. Bob comes up with an idea of buying Jake out. but. Bob knows if he approaches Jake, regardless of what he offers to pay, Jake is going to say no. So Bob has got to be smart. Bob is talking to me about this doing one hour meetings. We had become quite close. And I tell Bob, I bet there are lawyers out there who specialize in helping other companies acquiring other companies. Bob asked me if I owe any. I don't, but I did have a client who specialized in business law who would be more familiar with this whole thing. I give Bob his contract info and Bob thanks me. Bob contracts the lawyer and tells the lawyer what he would like to do. The lawyer tells Bob, a lawyer who used to work for his firm, now works for a firm that specializes in mergers and acquisitions. And if Bob wanted to buy out Jake's company, he's confident that this firm could get it done. Also, this firm was in the big city, far away from their small community. So it's unlikely Jake would know what's truly going on. Bob contracts the firm and says he wants to buy out his competitor and would like to enlist their services. 
Now, this already getting a bit longer, so I get back to the point. The firms ended up buying Jake's company, Lock, Stock, and Barrel, and gave the company to Bob. All the while, Jake was completely oblivious to the fact that his arch enemy has just acquired his very own company. I recall Bob describing to me the day he walked into Jake's company with such delight. Bob was told he owned company, Jake had been paid, and was expecting to meet the new owner of that company that pleasant Monday morning. Jake was given a title of general manager, and was considered second in command now. So Bob walked into the building that once belonged to Jake, with its documents and lawyers that helped him acquire the firm who Jake was familiar with. Bob walked into Jake's office to Jake's surprise. Jake said, Hi Bob. Bob said, Hi Jake, how are you? Jake said, I'm good, but what are you doing here? Bob, Oh, nothing much, just thought I'd come check out my newly acquired business. Jake, uh, uh. What? Uh -huh. Bob said, Jake, you sold your company to me. Jake, I did what? No, I didn't. I sold it to XYZ. And Bob goes, XYZ is a law firm I hired to organize the transaction. I'm now the owner. Jake said, that's BS. And Bob said, here's the documents. Lawyers who Jake was familiar with confirmed this was all true. Jake, so you are now my boss? Bob said, yes, now get up, that's my chair, and I'm tired, I want to sit down for a minute. Jake said, but this is my office. And Bob said, this is my company, and I have decided that this office is now my office. So I'm going to need you to get out of my chair. So Jake gets out of the chair. Bob said, great. Well, have a seat, Jake. Jake, thanks. And Bob said, Jake, I think the first order of business today is getting rid of redundancies. Jake asked, what do you mean? Bob said, well, you see, Jake, whenever a company acquires another company, you often get overlap. Redundancies. Two HR departments, two secretaries, two accountants, etc. But now it's all one company, so you got redundancies, overlaps, which is quite frankly a waste of money. Jake agrees, yeah. And Bob went, and I don't need two owners working for one company. And he laughs. And he tells me he had the biggest poop-eating grin on his face. Jakes, it's become apparent that your services are no longer required. And effective immediately, you are terminated. Jake protested. And Bob went, the decision is final. You may collect your personal belongings and leave the premises. What time did you get to work this morning? Uh, Jack Grant, uh, 7 a.m.? Bob said, great. So you have been here for two hours. I will make sure payrolls pay you out for two hours on the agreed upon rate in the buyout agreement. Have a nice day. Jake asked it, so you're just going to fire me just like that? Bob went, yep, should have done this long ago. Jake said, what about my family? Bob said, Jake, I just bought your company from you and paid you a lot of money. You'll be fine. Now get out of my office and out of my building. And that is how Bob acquired and fired an employee he should have fired long before. Some background. I remember the day vividly when Bob scheduled an appointment with me to go over Company B services and negotiate a new service contract with us. It was the day that Bob had fired Jay. Bob was in a great mood, one of the best mood ever. We did business we need to handle and Bob said, PJ, you have helped me a lot get this all done. I would like to invite you out to dinner and drinks and let's watch Monday night football together. I really haven't. I said, Bob, I really didn't do much. He said, oh yes, you did. You pointed me in the right direction. I go, well, that's at least I could do. He said, very well. Still like to take you to dinner and drinks, if that's alright with you. Now, I'm not the one to turn down free beer and food, so I agreed. And that night, Bob and I went to local hangout, watched Monday Night Football and ate and drank beer. And Bob recounted this whole experiences with such joy. Bob later rebranded Jake's companies as a commercial-only enterprise and refocused his main company on residential. And both companies still exist today and run by Bob and Son now.
Well, that's how you get your revenge done legally. Actually, but you know, on a second thought, it's not really even a revenge. Firm. It's just you know buying out your competitor indirectly, using a law firm that specializes in mergers and acquisitions. It ended splendidly, I think. Bob was happy he took down his competitor, fired Jake on the spot right in his office. Nonetheless, the reason why I don't think it's a revenge is that you know Bob did mention that he paid Jake hefty sum of money for the company. Don't know how much, but as we have seen the company B owned by Jake's performance, it's not doing so well. So I guess it's better off to sell it to someone rather than keep rotting it until it collapsed. In my opinion, it's a win-win type of situation for both parties. Nonetheless, it was satisfying to sack your arch enemy from his own company though. And now for the comments. We have the first comment by you slash hot lava tube. I hope they included a clause in the sale that prevents Jake from competing with Bob. I presume they would, otherwise Jake could just take the money from the sale and start a whole new fencing company and start a process all over again. Well that's interesting perspective to think about, but I think it wouldn't happen because Bob hired a firm that specializes in these types of situations. Nopi replied, I'm not aware if they had such language, they might have, but I wasn't privy to that info. And Bob never mentioned anything like that. From what I heard, Jake eventually moved out of that era to another era, and that was the last I heard of Jake. Meanwhile, user my name is autocorrect phrase satisfying. And while the revenge was pro, Bob was the bigger man all the way around. Username turn your phone dummy ask. But the guy selling the company made a bunch of cash, right? Yeah, exactly my thought. Jake actually profited from this, I believe, because Bob had to purchase all the brand name legal rights of Company B that was founded by Jake. And we have the final comments from you slash DillyGav2101. This is literally professional revenge. That's it for today, fellow humans. Thanks for watching. Dank Doggo appreciates your time. If you enjoy our content and want to see more of us, stay tuned and subscribe. Don't forget to smash that like button or doggo will cry. Also, you can always tell us your doggo comrades, your experiences in the comment section. I will catch up with you guys later in the next video.